Talk Radio. Jeremy Corbyn has this week been the victim of a crazed, unhinged assault by the agents of the powerful. A frenzied attack to destroy him for fear that he might win. The proximate method is the exploitation of deep-seated Jewish fear, literally summoning up the demons of Nazism against Britain's finest anti-fascism. It doesn't get much more serious than that for all concerned. And when I say the agents of the powerful, I mean from left to right, from the liberal to the far right. I mean from the Guardian and Channel 4 News right across the spectrum. All guns blazing, all trained on one man, a man without a scintilla of racist or anti-Semitic feeling in his body, in his psyche. A man whose parents stood at Cable Street against, against fascism and anti-Semitism. He's been attacked by newspapers that were supporting the Nazis at the time. He's been attacked by newspapers that were funding the British Union of Fascists at the time. He's been attacked by newspapers that smeared a bucket full, in fact a skip full, of thinly disguised anti-Semitic abuse against Ed Miliband through his father Ralph Miliband under a headline that said the man who hated Britain, accentuating that he arrived here as a Jewish refugee from the Low Countries, the man who hated Britain, Ralph Miliband, actually fought for Britain against the fascists that the newspaper in question helped to fund and with whom they fraternised. The low point, you might be surprised to hear, but only if you've not been paying attention, was the package, I think they call them, on Channel 4 News last night when a child was interviewed, no parent or guardian nearby, and was allowed to say that she was being frightened in the playground by people who were telling her that her fate as a Jewish schoolgirl might be like the fate of Jewish schoolgirls in Germany and across Europe in the 1930s and 40s. And the child was allowed to say that she believed that these things were a result of what Jeremy Corbyn had been saying. Any journalist, as opposed to a popinjay propagandist would have asked the schoolgirl, what did Jeremy Corbyn say that could possibly have justified that? But no question like that was forthcoming. It was left in the air that Corbyn must have said or must have done something so anti-Semitic that it was now frightening 13-year-old schoolgirls in London. It is a gigantic Gobelian lie. Goebbels could not have bettered the package on Channel 4 News last night. The journalist in question was spoken to by us on Twitter and invited to answer for her conduct on this show this evening but she directed us to the Channel 4 News press team, who haven't got back to us at the time of broadcast. I'm picking out Channel 4 News, not because it's the worst news in Britain, but because it's the least worst news in Britain. It, like the Guardian newspaper, serves the function of the lipstick on a pig. A pig that is the British media and political class, that is frightening Jewish 
schoolgirls in London on a gigantic Gobelian lie that Jeremy Corbyn not only hates Jews, but that the existential future, the existence of Jewish life in Britain is threatened by this mild-mannered geography teacher in his woolly jumper, in his thread-worn second-hand jackets. At least that's what he used to show up in Parliament in. It is a lie so gigantic that, as Goebbels knew, there will be some who will believe it. If you tell a lie, make it a big one and repeat it often enough. And as Malcolm X said, before you know it, the newspapers will have you hating the people that are standing up for you and loving the people who are doing you down. And that's exactly where we are today. Thunder and lightning came in triptych when three carefully coordinated front-page newspapers of failing, fading Jewish community newspapers read by scarcely anyone but guaranteed an outing for their front-page splash against Corbyn on every newspaper review endlessly throughout the day and throughout the days on every television station, providing the fodder for talk shows across the radio networks and fueling the next day's propaganda onslaught. Now, on one level, this is because of Jeremy Corbyn's astounding success. The man for whom a special general election was called just over 12 months ago so that Theresa May could wipe the Labour Party off the political map, could consign Jeremy Corbyn to the dustbin of political history. That that didn't happen, that the reverse happened, and that this onslaught was launched at the precise moment, precise to the day moment, that Jeremy Corbyn moved into a four in some polls, five-point lead in the national opinion polls, should, if you have a brain cell, tell you what this is really all about. This is not about Jews. It's not even about Israel. This is about destroying Jeremy Corbyn's potential to be Britain's Prime Minister. That's my point of view. I want to hear... Yours, 0344 499 1000. Mind you, the enemy within in Labour, which has spent two years stabbing Jeremy Corbyn in the back, in some cases in the front, survives so far to fight another day. All the talk about a breakaway, a new centre party, a government of national unity has gone quiet. But that doesn't mean the tectonic plates are not shifting underneath our feet. We'll be talking to a bright young thing in the journalistic fraternity, Patrick Christie's, a journalist at Westminster, who'll be talking us through just what Vince Cable was up to when he missed the crucial Brexit vote in Parliament because he was away having discussions about the creation of a new anti-Brexit party. And the Blairite ranks of the Vauxhall constituency Labour Party have struck the first blow for deselection. They have begun the process of unseating Kate Hoy as their Member of Parliament. 29 years or more She's been sitting there as the MP in South London. The proximate reason is Brexit and her principled belief in it. I've known her for 40 years, literally, though she doesn't look it. She's a principled woman. Some of her principles I agree with, like when she stood next to me in the 1980s defending the Palestinian people 
when you could have fitted all of us into this studio and had room for an elephant in the corner. I liked our principles in opposing the Iraq War, when, ditto, there weren't too many of us in Parliament around. I liked our principles in defending Brexit. I liked our principles in defending Jeremy Corbyn, whom she has supported throughout. But those principles are all nixed by the fact that she is determined that the Brexit that the British people voted for should be delivered. We'll be talking about that too. We'll be talking to Graham Bash of the magazine Labour Briefing, another man I've known for 40 years about the Labour anti-Semitism row. We'll be talking if we can tear somebody away from trying to see the blood moon this evening about the extraordinary cosmos issues that have arisen this week, particularly the discovery of a lake the size of Lake Windermere on Mars, proving, at least to me, that there's life on Mars in answer to David Bowie's famous question. Or that if there is no longer life on Mars, that it just goes to prove that you can have a planet, you can have life, and it can all go extinct and as dead as the dodo. Is Donald Trump as dead as a dodo? Turns out his uh, long-standing aide from the days of The Apprentice has been secretly writing a book about him, which they're about to release, called Unhinged. He certainly sounded unhinged on Twitter this week, in capital letters, the modern-day equivalent of the letters I used to receive, written in green ink, when he threatened, over Twitter, nuclear war against Iran. What could possibly go wrong. It's all coming up in the mother of all talk shows.